the area that we work in, which is an inland sea that's joined between Washington and British Columbia. It's about 17,000 square kilometers. It's huge, amazing wildlife, beautiful place. It never had a name until the year 2009. On the Washington side, they call it a Puget Sound. On the Canadian side, they call it Georgia Basin. But it was really one ecosystem. And in 2009, all of the people that spend their lives giving names to things finally said, we need a name for this place, and we're going to call it the Salish Sea. And it's, it's so magnificent, but nobody really knows about it. If you said Everglades, people would say, yeah, I know, I know what that is. That makes sense. Alligators, it's all grass. If you say Amazon, that makes sense. If you say Salish Sea, nine times out of ten, people are going to say, what? It's called the Salish Sea in recognition of the Coast Salish, who are the tribes and the First Nations and the people who have been there since the place was created in time immemorial. So it honors them, and it really gives a sense of place to that area. When they started doing some research in the 70s and 80s, it's really trying to understand this place, people said, geez, this is a really unique place, and it's really separated out, and we really need to think about it as an ecosystem. So it was really the scientists that drew the attention to the area, uh, probably back in the 70s and 80s. It's hugely destructive to, to have a, an ecosystem that goes across multiple borders, because um, you know some people treat you know uh, Washington State may treat something different than British Columbia treats it, and the people in Washington may have different. Um, priorities for what they want to do than the people in Canada do. And then you have these First Nations. There are a lot of First Nations in the area, and they're all sovereign nations. So they have their ability to hunt and fish and manage things, and they've been doing that forever. They also have their own view on what they want to do. So borders can create conflicts.